from six wheel cars that were too dangerous for the track to autopilot systems that made racers drive perfectly. These are bad F1 mods that will never be allowed in the sport again. And first, we have to start with one of the most controversial gadgets in F1 history. See, shark fins were a staple addition to F1 cars ever since Team Renault introduced them to their R28 vehicle in 2008. They provided great aerodynamics to the vehicle by stabilizing the air force to the rear wing of the car, especially while cornering. The shark fins proved to be so OP that by the end of the season, every team's car was equipped with this brand new technology. Not only did they increase lateral forces to the vehicle, they allowed racers to drive much more aggressively in crucial turns. But the biggest problem with shark fins, they just looked ugly, man. I mean, come on, even that weird static livery Alfa Romeo brought out in testing a couple years ago looked better. That's why in 2011, the FIA banned the use of shark fins for aesthetic purposes. But five years later in 2016, the FIA accidentally made them legal again. See, because of some vague wording in their regulations meant to increase aerodynamic freedoms and allow teams to experiment with more aggressive looking designs, the dreaded shark fin made an unfortunate comeback. The 2017 season was plagued with ugly looking cars, who were forced to implement the design if they wanted to remain competitive. But because their return was due to an oversight by the FIA, an official vote had to take place if they were to be officially allowed the following year. And while 9 out of 10 teams supported their return for the 2018 season, one team wasn't so sure. See, McLaren boss Zach Brown refused to support the comeback of shark fins, and with a unanimous decision required to bring them back into regulation, the other teams begged McLaren to vote in favor of their return. But behind the scenes, the other teams secretly spent millions redesigning their cars with even more efficient fins, as they were certain everyone would be on the same page on their legality. But Brown claimed that shark fins would leave too little space on the car for sponsorship logos. And with McLaren being one of the most valuable teams in F1 history, you know they want as much room as possible to advertise their partners. Despite the support of other F1 organizations, McLaren single-handedly decided that shark fins would never return to the grid again. But this decision could have been made out of pure pettiness because 20 years earlier, Team McLaren was the victim of other teams conspiring together to ban a brand new gadget McLaren spent millions of dollars on. See, in 1997, McLaren debuted a secret technology they had been working on for years, a dual brake system. They gave drivers the ability to isolate braking to only the front or back wheels. And it proved to be a huge advantage during the season as no other team thought to equip their vehicles with this innovative brake system. But after spectators started noticing suspicious activity from Team McLaren during corners, it was only a matter of time before other teams found out about this unique advantage. See, a regular F1 driver would never apply the brakes while turning into a corner. But the McLaren drivers, they were lapping way faster on every single lap. Eventually, teams started noticing that McLaren cars had their brakes active during turns, which prompted them to investigate the matter further. After discovering the additional braking system, every other team in F1 pressured the FIA to make it illegal. As they said, it provided McLaren with an unfair advantage. And they were kind of right, as McLaren dominated the competition that year, winning several Grand Prix thanks to their one-of-a-kind mod. The most obvious was the opening race of the 1998 season, when McLaren drivers Mika Hakkinen and driver Coulthard lapped the entire competition during the Melbourne GP. So before the next race, the FIA was forced to step in, officially banning dual brake systems from all vehicles. But not every ban modification provided an unfair advantage. Some were simply too dangerous to allow on the grid, like the Ter Like the Terrell P34, the first ever six-wheel car to debut on a racetrack. See, Terrell came up with this genius strategy to fit two additional wheels on the front sides of their vehicles. These extra wheels gave the car more traction, improved handling, and better aerodynamics due to their smaller size, which allowed for much tighter turns. 
And at first, Team Terrell saw major success with one-of-a-kind design, even winning the 1976 Swedish Grand Prix, much to the surprise of F1 fans. But everything went downhill after that. Because the very next year, the FIA lowered the minimum weight requirements for their cars by almost 200 pounds. Suddenly, the newly designed P34 became one of the heaviest vehicles on the track. And because most teams wanted their cars to be as light as possible, the small advantages gained by adding two extra wheels became completely irrelevant. The P34 was so slow that it failed to pick up a single win in the 1977 season. But other teams, they were already experimenting with lighter weight six-wheel designs, like Ferrari and Williams, who are two of the most dominant teams in all of F1 history. But even they were unable to make the design work as their cars failed even harder than the P34. And after the 1982 season, the FIA officially banned any car from having more than four wheels, as they claimed it was too dangerous and impractical for the team to operate. But the six-wheel car wasn't the only dangerous technology Team Terrell introduced to F1, as in 1997, they debuted a car with a never-before-seen X-Wing design. Looking like something straight out of Star Wars, these X-Wing cars were designed to dominate downforce heavy tracks like Monaco. And boy, did Terrell cook with this one. Because after not scoring a single point during the first half of the 1997 season, Terrell was willing to risk it all on this experimental new technology. And with the Monaco Grand Prix just days away, they trusted their driver Mika Salo to pull off an upset with the first ever X-Wing car. Although he failed to win the event, Salo ended the race with a solid 5th place finish, which was the best result of Terrell's entire year. Seeing the potential of this brand new design, teams like Ferrari, Jordan and Sauber developed their own version of the X-Wings for the 1998 season. And although they looked a little silly, they did their job well, generating extra downforce, especially when directly behind another vehicle. But their biggest issue was their flimsy design and dangerous placement near the driver's head. That's why after only four races, the FIA outlawed the X-Wing design, saying that they posed too much of a hazard for other drivers, as they would easily be knocked off in the event of a crash. But that's not even the quickest it took for a new design to be banned. One modification? was banned after just one race. See, the fan car was a secret project that the Branham F1 team spent years developing. And it's exactly what it sounds like. A giant fan attached to the rear of the car meant to force air over the top of the vehicle to give it better downforce. And after Niki Lauda won the 1978 Swedish Grand Prix with this ridiculous looking car, other teams weren't happy at all. They instantly banded together in protest pressuring the FIA to make it illegal. And surprisingly, the FIA gave in to their demands, banning that over-the-top mod after just one race. But while the fan car still required a heavily skilled driver to operate it, these next two banned mods were literally an autopilot that could be abused by anyone. See, back in the 1990s, teams introduced something called active suspension to their cars, which perfectly adjusted the car's suspension without any driver input. And there was one team that was very successful while using this autopilot system. See, the Williams F1 team was a powerhouse back in the 1990s. And with their active suspension system, they were able to win two constructors' championships back to back in 1992 and 1993. But there was a problem. Because some drivers argued that it made the cars too easy to drive, which removed any skill expression from the sport as new drivers no longer had to make split-second suspension shifts. And whatever team had the most advanced active suspension system usually ended up dominating the competition. That's why at the end of the 1993 season, the FIA was forced to step in and ban active suspension altogether. But that wasn't the only autopilot technology that proved to be too OP on the racetrack. See, traction control was very similar to active suspension, a fully automated system that adjusted the rotation of the car's tires to keep drivers from losing control and slipping off of the track. It was a good way to keep racers from crashing into walls or spinning out into the gravel, but there was one issue. See, F1 drivers are the best of the best, and they should be able to drive every part of a car perfectly. 
So when F1 looked at what autopilot system should be taken away along with the active suspension, traction control was right there. So they banned it, just like that. But there was one team that was accused of illegally keeping the system in their vehicles and continuing to use it long after it was banned. See, in the 1994, the Benetton F1 team was placed under investigation after reports starting surfacing of them using unauthorized electronic aids. So the FIA was forced to launch an all-out investigation into the team. And when F1 detectives investigated the Benetton team computers, they found suspicious software in the vehicle's source code that was eerily similar to a traction control system. But the team claimed that the software was inactive and refused to cooperate with investigators. At the time, the FIA could find no conclusive evidence that the Benetton F1 team was guilty. See, the ban of any electronic systems like traction control or active suspension was hard to enforce and monitor because it was something that could not be seen by the naked eye. But eventually, the FIA came up with a genius solution to make it so teams could no longer hide illegal softwares within their vehicles. The FIA developed a standardized electronic engine control unit that all teams were required to use, which leveled the playing field and made it so every vehicle had access to the same officially sanctioned software that couldn't give anyone an unfair advantage. But if there's one thing you should know about F1 teams is that they will try literally anything to maximize their advantage over their competitors, including using exotic fuels which are made of pure poison. See, in 1980, teams were experimenting with more efficient fuels than simple gasoline, like Honda and Shell who worked together to create a fuel mixture that contained almost pure toluene. And because I know you're not a scientist, let me break it down for you. Alright, alright. For real though, toluene is an extremely toxic substance. I mean, it's used in paint thinners, cement, gorilla glue, and it causes severe neurological damage if inhaled. And F1 didn't want teams getting too crazy coming up with insane alternative fuel sources. That's why in 1993, the FIA implemented new fuel regulations, essentially restricting teams to using boring oval gasoline. These are some of the craziest gadgets and modifications that were banned by F1. Make sure to like and subscribe for the best F1 content out there.